Okay, so uh, Doobie Brothers, their second album, To Lose Street, released in 1972. This is a huge breakthrough album for them. The album went platinum. Had two uh, huge singles on the album. More of that in a minute. Um, but uh, they got Ted Templeman in to produce, and he managed to uh, meet the requirements of a slightly heavier sound. Well, it's integrated a mix of rock, a bit of country folk and R&B into their sound um, so that they were a little bit more middle of the road although in the same sort of family as the Eagles but not quite as uh, expansive in terms of uh, long pieces like their cousins, the Allman Brothers Band and uh, I, I, it, it, the album signalled my first entry into their uh, field of music, so to speak. Um, I actually really enjoyed this one. Uh, and the next album, of course, The Captain and Me, was even more popular. Um, but uh, uh, let's try and go through some of the tracks. Uh, listen to the music starts us off written by Tom Johnson of course and it's got a tr great uh, chorus line it's a real sing along, along uh, uh, country rock classic really um, uh, got huge radio play um, very easy on the ear um, and uh, some nice guitar pieces but nothing too self indulgent um, and it was definitely one that hit the high spots. Uh, and you could sing along to it. And it was gr a great live catch as well. Um, so uh, off to a pretty stellar start, it has to be said. Okay, so uh, the Dewey Brothers. The drummer, John Hartman, arrived in California. And he was hoping to uh, <coughs> get into the band Moe Grape. Uh, but that plan was aborted. But he did manage to, uh, through the help of Skip Spence, who was in Grape, he managed to meet a singer, guitarist and songwriter, Tom Johnson, and they decided to form a band which became Doobie Brothers. Uh, their fledgling group name was Pud, uh, and they experimented with a few lineups uh, around San Jose, and they were a power trio uh, with the addition of bassist Greg Murphy. Uh, and they briefly worked with some horn. Um, but in 1970, they teamed up with Patrick Simmons, another singer, guitar guitarist and songwriter, and J Dave, Dave Shogren, who played bass. Uh, and uh, uh, so the, the first incantation of the Doobies uh, emerged uh, and uh, there was uh, an inclination through Johnson to develop uh, his uh, taste in rhythmic R&B. Uh, and anyway, so that's uh, basically signalled the beginning of the Doobie Brothers uh, in 1970. Um, they became a regular on the gig tour around Northern California in 1970 and I got a strong following, particularly from the Hells Angels and uh, they got a recurring gigs at bikers' favourite venues uh, in Santa Cruz, uh, for example, uh, and a few others. Um, eventually, Warner Brothers snapped them up uh, and they got a contract with them and uh, this was uh, uh, where Ted Templeman uh, uh, heard them and the dual lead guitars and three part harmonies were uh, a catch really and uh, the record company believed that there was some future in the band and so uh, in December 71, though, Shogun was replaced with uh, bass guitarist Tyrone Porter, uh, who also sang and wrote songs. 
and uh, uh, the initial album wasn't uh, hugely successful it has to be said uh, and uh, I'm just looking for some reference on that uh, no I can't see any recollection uh, but uh, yeah uh, their initial gig initial record was released in April 1971 self-titled uh, and uh, basically uh, didn't really do much uh, too much acoustic guitars on it and uh, a bit too countrified uh, so uh, it had little success and so then we came to the 1972 album Toulouse Street which is the one we're uh, reviewing now Just to uh, add on a little bit more about this opening cut, uh, two drummers are now augmented in the band, uh, very much following in the example of their uh, big brothers, the Ormond brothers, uh, and uh, steel drums used on this one as well, and you can hear that sort of uh, uh, sort of uh, el electronic feel to the 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 echo on the drums. Uh, and uh, both uh, young Johnson and uh, Simmons are involved in the uh, singing on this uh, opening cut as well. Um, so that just about sums up uh, uh, the opening cut, listen to the music. Just a final little word on that opening cut. Uh, the... Uh, song also has a, a little bit of banjo on it uh, courtesy of um, and I'm just trying to check that now uh, Pat Simmons uh, and also uh, I also noted uh, and I don't want to forget it the cover of the album uh, is basically uh, and the inside centrefold photos were taken at a brothel on Toulouse Street uh, so on to track two, uh, Rocking Down the Highway. Well, you know, when you think about uh, on the road type songs, of course, Born to be Wild. Well, this is a close second, really. This really does sum up uh, the title of it, Rocking Down the Highway. It's got a, a really uh, forceful little beat. There's a nice bit of guitar and uh, a bit of piano courtesy of one Bill Payne who you may know was uh, the keyboard and piano player uh, with Little Feet and he actually appears on uh, four of the tracks uh, on this album uh, and I'll refer to him when we get to those other tracks so this is a, a pretty standard on the road sort of uh, uh, song great in the car with the uh, cassette or the eight track cartridge or the cd player or, or even the uh, uh, nowadays of course using the zip drives to play your digital uh, but whatever the format it will go down a bunch particularly if the sun's shining so to mama lou uh this is written by uh, simmons and it's very much his uh, take on that laid-back Caribbean ideal. Uh, some, it's acoustic-driven, and it's all very pleasant, uh, with a certain edge, a sort of country folk edge, uh, to, to include on it as well. The title track is up next. It's another Sim Simmons composition. And it's uh, a ballad, uh, sang beautifully, but it, it certainly rang some Crosby, Still, Nash harmony bells with me. Uh, that's part of its beauty, I guess. Uh, uh, very nice uh, uh, sort of uh, track 
that illustrated the fact that this band had some diversity and they weren't just a, you know, a rocking sort of crew uh, basically trying to do their Bob Seger impersonation. Just noted from the credits that uh, the acoustic guitar player was Dave Shogren. He was the bass player who was uh, fired, really, and as this album was being put together. And I also noted on the bridge of the song uh, some delicate little flute, but there's no credit on that, um, so I'm not sure who uh, was the uh, imaginative musician that introduced that, but it's a nice touch. Closing out uh, the first side then is Cottonmouth. Uh, this is uh, written by Sills and Croft, who were a sort of uh, duo, a sort of folk duo. Uh, I don't know much about them. They're responsible for the writing on this uh, song, um, and it uh, incorporates some uh, nice, gentle horns, predominantly sax, tenor and baritone, but there's also a trumpet thrown in uh, to the mix, and it, it, it enables one to get some a soulful feel to the sound. There's also some delicate acoustic uh, guitar picking. Uh, I'm not sure whether that was Johnson or Simmons, but it certainly works, and it's a, a nice closer. So, turn it over, side B, opens up with uh, a real sort of Mississippi Delta blues version of Sonny Boy Williams' uh, Don't Start Me Talking. Uh, it's 12 bar blues. A gear, it shifts up a gear though, so it enables uh, opportune uh, moments for the two uh, main guys to exert themselves on some frisky uh, guitar work, which I like. And there's also uh, the horns uh, there as well uh, to swell out the sound. Uh, Bill Payne's back on piano. Um, it's a nice sound. It's uh, uh, it's blues. What do you expect? Um, and more than competent has to be said, um, but not excessive on the guitar soloing. Then we're on to track seven, second track on side two. And it's the gospel-driven Jesus is Just All Right, written by Arthur Reed Reynolds and sang by Simmons. Uh, by far my favourite track on this album, and it's a, a pretty good version. Uh, I prefer the Birds uh, version on The Ballad of Easy Rider, but this comes a very close second. Of course, it's in three parts. It starts off with a, a sort of uh, a, a quick uh, rhythm, uh, and then it bridges into a slow blues where uh, the lads on guitar uh, have an opportunity to open their shoulders and the guitar playing is exquisite, it has to be said. Uh, I like the sort of harmony, do 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 do, um, which uh, uh, helps one uh, participate by tapping one's feet and it's a standout an uh, excellent song indeed. And uh, just to uh, add a, a bit, uh, Payne plays organ on this one and uh, one has to say that the percussion with the two drummers uh, clearly reflects the influence of the Allman Brothers band on the Doobies and it, it makes all the difference to the a uh, rhythmic feel to this uh, gospel song. Great stuff. White Sun. We're back to sort of acoustic driven. Uh, very delicately played. Uh, soft, gentle sort of lyric. And uh, I like the harmonies on here as well. Um, it's something that one couldn't find the Allman Brothers uh, referring to. Uh, but it works well and it adds that sort of folkness to this album, which is a great album. So we move to Disciple, and here the band really do stoke up 
the comparisons with their bigger neighbours, the Allman Brothers Band. The twin guitars come to light, uh, and the drumming, of course, the two drummers. But what sets them apart from the Almonds is the way that the two lead uh, singers uh, link together their vocals in a way which uh, really sort of enhances the the rock field. It's a hard rock, bluesy sort of workout, seven minutes uh, in total, and uh, enables them to uh, really take advantage of the double lead guitar and paired drummer uh, drumming. Uh, but that sort of additional vocal harmony interlocking uh, st sticks them outside the Allman Brothers uh, sort of uh, arena, really. And uh, this is why this album is such a good album, I think, um, because of the benefits of having two great lead singers. As we near the finish, about a minute out, uh, the second lead guitar uh, comes in. And God, do they sound like the Almonds. We finished with a one and a half minute acoustic uh, blues um, written and sang by Johnson. In fact, he's responsible for the last three tracks on side two. And predom he's predominant on the album. Uh, Simmons takes care of... Uh, I'm just counting them up. Two compositions. Uh, there's, of course... Uh, Three uh, cover versions, uh, Seals and Croft, The Sonny Boy Williamson, and The Gospel Juices are just all right. Uh, and that leaves uh, Johnson uh, being the writer on uh, five, and up, five of, the, of, of the ten. Um, so Snake Man, yeah, it's pretty standard acoustic blues. The sort of thing that Steve Stills would uh, uh, tack on to his album. But it works well, and uh, it completes a very, very good second album. Uh, and it really uh, led to the platform, which became uh, the third album. Um, and the third album uh, was huge, absolutely huge, uh, The Captain and Me. And it was the first one I bought. Okay, so that's my take on the uh, 1972 second album by the Doobie Brothers uh, called Toulouse Street.